Welcome to the Borgo Service Team presentation on 3320-3720 drill hydraulics. The above image shows the start of the wing out process. Oil comes from the tractor remote and travels through an orifice. The old orifice was located right by the half inch tip and is prone to wrecking the tip. The new orifice is located directly in the block. The orifice on the pressure side ensures that the wing lift is slow enough to prevent damage. Once the oil travels through the orifice, it travels to the directional control valve and then an adjustable relief. This relief valve limits the pressure to the base end of the cylinders on the wing lift side. In some cases, this pressure may be too low and then the wings won't start the unfolding process. You can simply adjust the relief pressure up a little bit to start that process. Please note that units with equipped with high float do not require relief valve for wing lift. Also, the 50 foot and up 3320s as of 2016 don't require a relief valve. The above image shows the start of the wing out process. The inner wing ball valves are open, giving a fully full pressure to the base end of the wing lift cylinders. At the same time, the ball valves to the outer wings are closed. That forces the oil to the inner wings first and no oil going to the outer wings, keeping the sequence in the proper order. Once the inner wings get to the ground, a mechanical ball valve will close and it'll force the oil through a pressure reducing valve. As well, at the same time, it opens the outer wing ball valve and allows the outer wing to flip out. Again, showing the inner wing ball valve closed. Oil goes through a pressure reduction valve and is reduced pressure to the base end of the inner wing cylinders to prevent the cylinders from bending. This is also the reason why we can get away with no relief valve in the directional control valve because the pressure reducing valve is the reduction in pressure to the base end of the inner wing cylinders. So next, to wing up the drill, we're going to reverse the process. Our pressure side becomes our return side, shown in blue on the image. And our return side becomes our pressure side. We cycle the tractor remote the opposite way. So we pressure up both the rod ends of the inner and outer wing cylinders on both sides. The ball valve for the outer wing is open. And the internal check valve allows the oil to bypass the pressure reduction for the inner wings. The reason we don't need to have to worry about these inner wing ball valves being closed is the oil will always take the path to least resistance, which is lifting that lighter outer wing. And the inner wing won't start to lift until the outer wing is all the way up. Inner wing down pressure. After the drill is winged out, 
and after the tractor wing lift valve is in neutral, oil will be diverted from the opener directional control valve, the pressure side, over to inner wing down pressure. This is a function that will allow us to add a little bit of hydraulic pressure to the base end of the inner wing cylinders, shown in the dotted line on your screen, as well. It has pressure going to the base end of the outer wing cylinders, but because they're on a slotted linkage, the outer wings float manually and are kept in the ground by a, a weighted rear arm. There are two pilot operated check valves in the same circuit. So the pressure oil goes to the pilot operated check valves on both the pressure and return side. This allows there to be a path for the inner wing cylinders to move in and out and allows it to contour across the field. If this path was closed, such as your tractor remote in neutral and traveling across the field, there would be no path for the oil for this cylinder and it may result in a bent cylinder rod. Really a strong indicator that the tractor remote was in neutral. If the drill was being pulled across the field with the wings down, then there's no path for the oil. The inner ring down pressure valve is manually adjusted from 0 to 600 PSI. Manual adjustment on the valve. The same inner wing down pressure is applied to both the inner and outer wing lift cylinders. This will effectively transfer weight from the heaviest mainframe portion of the drill inner wings. And remember the outer wings are weighted and don't need that transfer of pressure. Now we're going to go to the other part of this same circuit. So with our pressure oil going to our directional control spool, this allows oil to be diverted to either the mid-row banders or the opener circuit. In the lower cycle, so pressure on this side, and this valve allowed to be straight through, it goes to the base end of the opener circuits, pushing them in the ground, or the rod end of the MRB cylinders, again, pushing them in the ground. With the power off on the control box, the natural state of this valve is in the down position. A very good way to ensure that you're in the right direction with your oil. There's a spring return to push it in this natural state in the down position. When you focus in on the opener down pressure valve, you would notice that there are three valves, two pilot operated check valves and one standard check valve. For model year 2016, we removed PO check valve CKGV and replaced it with a CAGL counterbalance valve to help hold the openers up better. If you had openers that were dropping over a short period of time, you could replace the PO check valve with a new counterbalance valve. To maintain opener down pressure, the pressurized oil is reduced by an electrohydraulic valve and a manual valve. They're all tied together on one 
valve stack. These are stacked together labeled PPHB8 slash RBAP. When you focus in on the MRB valve, you will notice that the down pressure oil going to the rod end of the cylinders is forced through a pressure reducing valve. So we have a pressure reducing valve. This is a manual adjustment. Also in the MRB circuit is one pilot operated check valve and one standard check valve. The standard check valve allows it to bypass the relief settings in the raising position. And the pilot operated check valves allows that mid-row bander to cycle up and down at the relief pressure adjustment. It won't lock the oil when you're in the field position. Allows the mid-row bander move to the adjusted relief pressure. If the drill is equipped with QDA, quick depth adjust, there will be a pressure and return oil split off before the opener directional control valve and sent to the QDA valve. So active pressure goes to a QDA valve. On the return side, we have a check valve. This prevents you from running the oil in the wrong direction. So if our opener circuit was engaged in the wrong direction and our blue line was now our pressure line, we would lock the oil and our QDA selector valve would not work to raise the QDA cylinders. Good way to verify you're in the correct direction. High float hydraulics. High float hydraulics is very similar to the standard hydraulics. The standard hydraulics had a separate directional control valve and a, and a opener down pressure valve. With the high float block, we incorporate them both in one valve. So it's two parts to the same valve. When the openers are in the lowered position, oil is forced through the manually adjusted pressure reducing valve then through the lockout valve to the base end of the steering cylinders. So oil after the direction of control goes to its pressure adjusted and to the base end of the steering cylinders. So when the openers are down, the steering cylinders are extended to the adjusted relief pressure. It's a manual adjustment. When the openers are in the raise position, tractor oil pressure is directed to the rod end of these same cylinders and retracts these cylinders. This is again a good reason why you don't want your remote in neutral for your tractor with these cylinders extended. When you turn a corner, you would bend the rods or break the clevises. So good idea to make sure your opener circuit is engaged and you're raising your openers with the control block when transporting across a field. 